After working a series of jobs in the game industry throughout the late 1980s, Dale DeSharoon had finally joined forces with Igor Asbov to form Animation Magic as we work our way into the 1990s. But at this point, their story had only just begun. From around 1991 to 1993, Animation Magic worked to produce their first two games for Philips, a pair of adventure RPGs based around the Legend of Zelda series entitled Link the Faces of Evil and Zelda the Wand of Gamelon. The company brought a few of the Russian animators to the United States to begin their work, and after preliminary production had begun, sent them back to the Russian division of Animation Magic to begin training other animators as well. Disharun and Razmov worked in tandem to coordinate the two halves of game development on opposite sides of the globe. And considering their minuscule budget, things were going remarkably well. But issues would soon begin to crop up. The animators had varying levels of skill, and were somewhat inconsistent in their styles, which proved a problem for maintaining a level of quality with the animation. This would lead to the notoriously uncanny visuals that the games would come to be known for. But further issues presented themselves with the CDI system itself. Production on the console had lasted three years longer than was intended, and Philips refused to update the original 1987 hardware for a new generation of consoles. Despite being praised for its graphical capabilities, the CDI quickly became known as a clunky, difficult-to-work piece of equipment. Its infrared controllers were notoriously unreliable, its core CD reading system was slow and made many of the intended features impossible, and the console suffered financially, not just because of its $1,000 price tag, but because, despite its biggest sellers being games, the CDI was never marketed to be for games in the first place. Coupled with mismanagement in the upper levels of Philips and the abysmal levels of funding Animation Magic was given, it was clear the company had their work cut out for them. But they persisted, and on October 10th of 1993, the two Zelda games were released. Animation Magic had saved dramatically by essentially designing one game engine that would be used for both games, implementing nearly identical game mechanics but with different enemies, storylines, and cutscenes. Now, contrary to popular belief, the game was not panned on release, as it is now. Rather, it received a fairly lukewarm response, with critics praising its impressive visuals but remarking on its clunky gameplay and its general mediocrity as a game. But Animation Magic wasn't finished yet. Soon after completing Faces of Evil and Wand of Gamelon, Animation Magic began work on another Nintendo-based game, Hotel Mario, and gave it essentially the same treatment as the Zelda games a year earlier. Hotel Mario, in which the Mario Brothers are tasked with closing doors in King Koopa's hotels for some arcane reason, was released on October 5, 1994, to similar reception as their previous titles. The games weren't awful, they were just decidedly average, and when compared with Nintendo titles of the time, which had strived to maintain a massive standard of quality and had considerably larger budgets, the Animation Magic games simply couldn't hold up. Another major issue was the general lack of oversight regarding the thematics of the games themselves. Neither Philips nor Nintendo seemed to care much about the consistency or accuracy of the game's art, storylines, or characters, reportedly only asking to see small pieces of concept art before giving Animation Magic the go-ahead. What resulted from this were games that, while competent on their own, were wildly out of sync with the image Nintendo had been trying to cultivate, and as a result they were shunned by fans of their respective franchises. Animation Magic's three CDI Nintendo titles would fade into obscurity, at least for a while, after this point. But this wasn't the end for the studio, either. Animation Magic was soon acquired by Capital Multimedia in December of 1994, and after their multiple year stint with Philips, decided to abandon the CDI for good. The CDI system itself would eventually go on to be known as one of the worst game consoles ever developed, and regrettably, it's often remembered for the low quality of the games Philip had contracted Animation Magic to produce. Following their departure from the CDI market, Animation Magic decided to move into the PC game scene. One of their first and most successful titles was the popular I Am Mean, released August 11, 1995, an edutainment game for MS-DOS in which the player is tasked with defeating the magician Ignatius Mortimer Mean and freeing imprisoned children by way of learning proper spelling and grammar. Notably, I Am Mean contained animation very similar to that seen in Hotel Mario and the Zelda duology, and this visual style would go on to be a trademark of the group. 
While the game's educational components were largely panned, the game itself was considered quite remarkable, and it's remembered a lot more fondly today than Animation Magic's previous CDI projects. Throughout 1995 and 1996, Animation Magic continued to produce small-scale educational games for PC, including Darby the Dragon and the Magic Tales series. The company produced a spiritual successor to I Am Mean, Chill Manor, and a handful of other educational games around this time as well. In late 1996, the company was once again contracted, this time by Blizzard Entertainment, to create an adventure game based around the popular Warcraft franchise, entitled Warcraft Adventures, Lord of the Clans. But this project would soon fall through in 1997, and Animation Magic was again bought out, this time by Davidson and Associates, the then owners of Blizzard. By this point, Dale, who had since changed his last name to De Sharon, had essentially completed his run with Animation Magic. De Sharon moved to Kiev in 1997 and founded a new company, Boston Animation, to operate in a manner very similar to Animation Magic. Animation and Magic itself would again be sold in December 1998 to Vivendi, a media conglomerate, and following Vivendi's financial troubles around the turn of the millennium, Animation Magic was essentially shut down for good in 2001. It had lasted close to a decade, and whether intentionally or not, had left behind an unforgettable legacy in the form of its strange but infinitely memorable games. De Sharon and Boston Animations continued to do art and animation for game studios throughout the 2000s, until Dale De Sharon became sick with leukemia in 2007. He died on February 5th of 2008, just a few years after giving an interview that illuminated much of the animation magic story for the world to see. Around this same time, De Sharon's decade-old works would begin to see new life. The rapidly developing YTP community took to the scenes from the Zelda games, Hotel Mario, and I Am Mean exceedingly well, and they continue, to this day, to be the most instantly recognizable icons of YTP the world has ever seen. Other elements from the game seem to permeate various corners of the web. The shopkeeper Morshu's dialogue from Faces of Evil, Mario's opening words from Hotel Mario, and much more all remain iconic even to this day. The legacy of Dale de Chiron and Animation Magic may not be a perfect one, but in its own unusual way, the company managed to bring joy to people all across the globe nearly 30 years after its creation. And in the end, that really is the best they could have hoped for. Thanks for watching.